Okay, so I've gone ahead and started sharing my screen here. You should hopefully be seeing that shortly. Once again, thank you everyone for attending. This is Kyle Lake. I'm an application engineer with Oasis Sales. I focus on our board products, Mentor Graphics board products, including uh, Expedition pads and hyperlinks as well. So any questions that we have today, hopefully I'll be able to answer. Uh, there is a Q&A box. If you find that, you can answer questions and I will address those accordingly. Um, if it's relevant, I'll definitely answer it right when we get to it. Otherwise, I'll wait till the end and we'll go ahead and answer it then. Okay. So this is part of our Did You Know series just to help to spread the word on what hyperlinks or Expedition or any of Mentor Graphics software can really offer you in the way of providing solutions for some of your difficult to tackle difficult to tackle electrical design needs. Okay. So uh, what we'll learn today, we'll just cover how decoupling issues can affect your PCB, how to quickly analyze and uncover power delivery issues utilizing hyperlinks, how hyperlinks can help verify your power distribution network, and then we can simulate plain noise and explore solutions to that as well. Just a little bit about Oasis Sales, if you're not too familiar. Uh, Oasis Sales has been the premier distributor for Mentor Graphics tools in the Midwest region for about over 16 years. So we've uh, worked, we work very closely with Mentor Graphics, uh, know all about the updates, and are very well supported for any technical or licensing issues that you have. So feel free to get in contact with me if you have any issues or have any questions that uh, you need help with. Um, we are excited to also be helping support the new Siemens product. If you're not aware, Siemens acquired Mentor Graphics a little over a year ago, and that has been fully implemented now, and we're continuing to see development and excited to grow as the tools grow with uh, capability. Okay. So this is Oasis Sales territory. Uh, if you live in one of those states, you can definitely contact me for licensing or technical issues, and we can I can help you out with that. If you're in any of uh, the other regions as well, we, I can definitely help point you to the correct technical or account manager resource for you. We do have quite a few webinars on our website. If you haven't checked out our website, oasissales.com, it's got some good technical information there for you, as well as a link to our YouTube page where all of our archive webinars that we've doing over the past few years have been uploaded and you can watch those if those seem relevant. Okay, I just wanted to talk a little bit about our next webinar, just in case it sounds interesting. Uh, save the date for rigid flex and hyperlinks stack up planning and simulation. That's gonna be hosted about a month from now actually, uh, Thursday, April 19th. And I believe uh, the time is going to be 8.30 Pacific time. So I apologize for the mistake there. Uh, and that will be covering just more hyperlinks on how to simulate and stack up plan for your rigid flex designs. Okay, and then here's just a, another link if you wanna take a snippet of this, of our YouTube channel, it's a direct link to that. Okay, so here's my contact information. If you wanna, I'll show this again at the end of the presentation, uh, so, but if you just wanna take note of that, uh, feel free to give me a call or send me an email with any technical issues that you might have. Okay. So with that, I'll actually go ahead and start talking about some of the concepts you might be more interested in uh, for hyperlinks PI for AC analysis. So just, I just want to give a quick overview of really what Mentor Graphics and Oasis Sales can offer you in the way of electronic design. There's four main branches or product lines for Mentor Graphics in the board system division. Expedition is an enterprise level PCB design tool, offers a lot of high horsepower for layout as well as team collaboration capabilities and data management, high-end data management capabilities. PADS is more of a desktop or project-based PCB design tool. It is still a very capable tool. There's very many, com many customers using this tool to uh, design complex boards. It just doesn't have the enterprise wraparounds to support large or global teams as well as Expedition can. Hyperlinks, what we're talking about today, 
it has quite a few different offerings within the hyperlinks name. Specifically, we'll be talking about hyperlinks power integrity today. There's also hyperlinks signal integrity, uh, hyperlinks DRC for EMI checking. Um, and if you are interested in those, we do have a couple more webinars on our website again that you can take a look at both of those SI and DRC tools. Valor is actually more on the manufacturing and assembly side of PCB design. It uh, will do some DFM checks for you. A lot of board houses around the country use that. Okay, so why is power integrity going to be important for us? As you know, as designers, PCB designs are just continually getting more complex. And that can be done in a few ways. The boards are just getting denser and denser. So that's what that red line in that graph is really showing is the average leads, average leads per square inch on a PCB design today has really exponentially grown from a few decades ago. So that just means that boards are getting smaller, packing more components onto there, and really the power plane and your power distribution network can really be affected by breakout strategies or complex planes, many voltage rails. So we definitely have to be cognizant of the effect that your power distribution network plays in delivering an effective product. Okay? And specifically, we'll be talking about the AC realm today. So um, just some hyperlinks PI, why are power integrity concerns a concern today? So today, there's many ICs on your boards with hundreds of different ground and power pins. Gone are the days where you have one IC with one dedicated power and one dedicated ground pin. So there's a lot more syncing of current off of that power pin at different frequencies and at different rates. So that can definitely cause an issue in the AC realm. Um, another reason that PI is a concern is there's more, often more than 10 different voltage rails on your designs. So uh, with so many different voltage rails, it's definitely difficult to make sure that everything has a good solid plane shape for it, enough decoupling capacitors attached to it, as well as a good solid reference plane close to it. Uh, and then also current switching requirements in the gigahertz range. So that's for the ICs syncing that current off of the I, off of the power plane, as well as uh, different components syncing those off of there. So at different frequencies, different edge rates, that can that can definitely cause noise on your power planes and cause issues. Okay, so hyperlinks PI. What can Hyperlinks PI do for, for us as electrical engineers or PCB designers? Really, Hyperlinks is trying to be a virtual prototype for users. What that allows us to do is identify power distribution problems earlier in the design. Unfortunately, a lot of times power distribution problems are found after the board has been made, and they are often very difficult to track down as the root cause of very strange issues that you can have on your actual design. So Hyperlinks PI allows us to identify those problems even as early as doing any layout of the design. If we're really concerned about a power plane where there's a lot of high frequency components pulling power off of your plane, we can even do some pre-layout analysis to design the plane, add decoupling capacitors, play around with different decoupling capacitor schemes, and see how that affects our actual power integrity. So Hyperlinks PI, through all of that, is really trying to reduce prototype spins, trying to reduce board spins and save you money. Uh, what we can do here is first identify issues in the board sim tool to find those power integrity issues, and then we can actually go a step further and do some what-if scenarios. What if I change the mounting scheme of all of my decoupling capacitors? What if I change my plane shape? What if I change the reference layer or the stack up? Really allows us to have a lot of flexibility in the tool and understand how that is going to affect our design. Okay. So hopefully that will allow us to get to the market faster and to create more re reliable products. Okay, so Hyperlinks PI is kind of essentially broken down into two major groups, and that is D 
BC analysis as well as AC analysis. And I just wanted to talk about them very briefly just to make sure we understand what we can achieve with both. Okay, so with the DC analysis, it's essentially looking at the power planes at a DC point of view, low speed DC. Okay. So what this allows us to do is just identify excessive voltage drop or high current density areas on your power plane. So if you have a small amount of copper, if there's a lot of vias going through that copper, that, uh, the DC analysis will take that into account and understand how the voltage drop is affected through those small amounts of copper in your plane areas. So in the DC analysis, we can just determine if there's enough copper and transition vias to support enough of that voltage across the entire plane as well as enough of that current. So you can set up how much your components are sinking off of that power plane. Okay, well, so with an AC analysis in the Hyperlinks PI realm, we kind of look at it in a different way. We're really identifying the power distribution network across all frequencies and looking at the impedance of that power plane. Okay. So with the AC analysis, we're able to determine which capacitor values for decoupling capacitors we need to use, uh, the amount or the number of decoupling capacitors that we need for a plane, as well as the mounting location. Okay. So if we have identified an issue, we're able to play around or experiment with the power plane spacing, the location, um, and then all of those variables for the capacitors as well. And we can also view the noise propagation from the power pins and the vias that are connected to that plane. Also, Hyperlinks PI does allow us to create uh, accurate models for vias, in, for uh, just vias going through your plane and bypassing vias. So this just allows us to create super extremely accurate models for your PDN and analyze your design using those hyper accurate models. I'm not seeing any questions in the Q&A box, which is, which is totally fine, but I just want to remind you that if you do have any questions, please feel free to write those in there, and I will definitely get to those. Okay. So we're often, a lot of engineers understand why we need to do PI analysis in the DC realm. It's quite easy to understand that if your 1.5 volt rail or voltage plane has too much DC drop or loss of voltage due to uh, incorrect design, that's easy to understand that those components might not work well at those lower voltages. So why do I need AC analysis? Well, this is really in the AC realm. We need to understand how many decoupling capacitors we need on that power plane to keep a low impedance profile through our power distribution network. So this will allow the, the power plane to be quiet, allow all of our components to see the voltage that that power plane has been designed to and hopefully operate correctly. Okay, so decoupling capacitors are a pivotal part to any power distribution network design. Um, and hyperlinks will allow us to really hone in on the optimal strategy for using those decoupling capacitors. It'll allow us to get the minimum number of capacitors that will really allow us to meet that requirement, as well as allow us to get rid of those unnecessary capacitors. So if you're doing designs where you're creating thousands of that design, just removing a few decoupling capacitors can really turn into a lot of cost savings. And then also it can allow us to solve for the value, the correct values of your of your decoupling capacitors. So if you have a lot of low values of those capacitors that will help out at the higher frequencies and the larger values will help out at uh, slower frequencies for your impedance through all of your operating frequencies of that power plane. Okay. So it'll also, so it takes into account the value of those capacitors, the number of them, and then also where to actually place those decoupling capacitors. Um, obviously a rule of thumb is place it close to the power pin on the ICs but then we also need to distribute them correctly throughout our power plane in order to ensure that every place on that power plane has a quiet voltage. Okay. Also, we can understand the noise propagation on the plane. What's the maximum of the induced noise voltage 
and which area do I need to add more capacitors to help mitigate the voltage noise on that plane. So um, some, here's some, just some common issues that can happen in the AC realm for a power distribution network. Uh, IC power pins do need current delivered across all frequencies, uh, just depending on the switching, free, switching time of those capacitors or of those ICs that are connected to that power plane. It really depends on the switching time and allows us to have that quiet power plane. So the next point is if there's a high PDN impedance, we're going to have an inadequate current delivery which can lead to a voltage ripple. Okay, so if we have voltage ripple all across our power plane um, and a, a significant ripple that can lead to some very big signal integrity issues such as jitter, timing violations, and bit errors. Okay. All right, so what can Hyperlinks PI do for us in an actual physical sense? So post layout, uh, Hyperlinks PI AC analysis has the ability to bring in your designs in the board sim view. So board sim is the part of Hyperlinks that allows us to actually manipulate the physical PCB design and run simulations on the physical PCB design. Okay, so if I'm if you're not using a mentor graphics layout tool, that's totally fine. Hyperlinks PI has the ability to go ahead and Hyperlinks in general has the ability to go ahead and bring in your design regardless of which CAD tool it was created with. Um, so what we can do here is analyze the, the impedance profile of that power distribution network. It should bring in all of your power nets correctly as well as all your decoupling capacitors and components. We just have to go ahead and set it up to analyze the impedance. So what we can do then is if we actually identify issues using some of the simulation, we'll be able to go ahead and export to LineSim to do what-if analysis. So in the board sim environment, we're not able to actually play around with the shape of the plane or where these decoupling capacitors are placed. If we want to go ahead and do that, you have to export it to the LineSim tool, which gives us a lot of flexibility to see what we can do to those structures. And also in the, in the Hyperlinks PI post layout realm, we can perform noise analysis, to visual, noise analysis to visualize the decoupling working, your decoupling strategy. So I just see a question from Glenn, uh, Glenn Ball, and he says, depending on the type of cap, the value can be quite dependent on voltage and temperature. Are there provisions in, in PI to handle that? Yes, yes, Glenn, there is actually provisions to do that. So definitely voltage, we can handle that in just a normal simulation. And then for temperature, there's a Hyperlinks PI thermal co-simulation capability that we have. We're able to sweep over multiple temperatures or set it to a certain temperature and see that how that affects your power distribution network at those different temperatures. Okay. So that's that is included with that hyperlinks with this hyperlinks PI tool. So uh, hope so that was the post layout realm that I was just talking about. Now in the pre pre layout realm, we have a lot of flexibility to do this. So there's two ways to work in the pre layout realm. We can actually draw out the plane shapes uh, using just normal graphics and kind of do a pre design of your power planes before it's actually laid on the board to understand the mounting technologies for your capacitors as well as in void or cutout areas of that plane and see how that affects your AC power plane. So this just allows us to go ahead and complete what if analysis, change the stack up and the dielectric, uh, anything that you really can handle in the hyperlink suite we can play around with in the pre layout tool to see how it's going to affect us. All right, so I see another question um, for, from Lee, hi Lee Gray. Uh, so he has the PAD Standard Plus suite, and this includes Hyperlinks SI, but not PI capability. That is correct. Um, so the SI is limited that's included with that PAD Standard Plus suite. 
Um, and the only options that I see for DC and DRC. So DC drop is an option for the pad suite. Unfortunately, hyperlinks uh, PI for the AC analysis is not an option for pads. So if you do ha have the need for an AC analysis power integrity tool, you will have to look at the full hyperlink suite. But that's not a bad thing because you'll be gaining a lot of signal integrity capabilities that's not included with the with the pad suite, as well as all of the DC drop capabilities and the PI AC capabilities that I'm talking about today. Okay. So, um, and then the last thing that we can talk, that we can really do in the hyperlinks DC realm or hyperlinks AC realm for power integrity is noise analysis. So what this is allows us to do is just kind of see the voltage ripple and the noise on that power plane due to uh, the ICs that are sinking current off of the power plane. Okay, so we can actually go in and edit the modeling for how those power pins are taking current off of the power plane. So you'll see here on the right-hand side, that's kind of like a visual representation of what the power plane noise looks like. Okay. So with that, um, I'll go ahead and hop into the tool. I've seen two questions. Those have been good questions, both of them. So thanks for those, and keep those coming if you guys do have any questions during the demo. All right, so this is the Hyperlinks Board Sim tool, and this is a design that has, it's a 12-layer design, that has quite a few different power planes assigned onto it. Okay. So you'll see that I actually have uh, my highlighted net is this 3.3 volt power supply or power plane on this. And that's what we're going to be going ahead and analyzing, taking a look at, and seeing how the, the decoupling strategy really works on this power plane. Okay, so what we can take a look at first is if I want to go ahead and highlight nets, highlight a particular PI net, we can go ahead and highlight that in the net selection box. You'll see that I have this 3.3 volt power supply source and I've got that highlighted in the viewing filter. So what I can do with this is I can either turn the highlight on or off, and that actually allows us to see what the copper looks like in the actual layout tool. Okay, so this is actually from a pads layout design, but again, like I said, you can bring in a hyperlinks file from any CAD tool and use that, okay? So if I wanna go ahead and take a look, I've got I can turn off my different planes and only be the, concerned about the ones that I'm concerned with. So plane seven is the actual 3.3 volt source or plane that we're gonna be concerned with. And plane 11 is actually the ground that's associated with this as well. Okay, so we're gonna be looking at those two layers throughout the demonstration. So there's a couple of different things if I go to the Simulate, simulate PI tab. Uh, and the first two are all to do with DC drop simulation. So I'm not going to be talking about those today. Uh, the others are analyzed decoupling. So this allows us to actually go ahead and look at our decoupling strategy. So this brings up the decoupling wizard. And what we can do here is open up configurations that we've saved or create a new scheme, simulation scheme. It's very important to go ahead and create configurations. That way you can set up your simulation once and not have to go ahead and adjust all of those values every time you run it. So you're able to set up the simulation, save that configuration, and then go ahead and use that very quickly in the future. So there's three different types of analysis that we can do in the hyperlinks decoupling wizard. Okay. 
So it's recommended to actually go ahead and step through them one at a time. So the first time that you bring in a design, we're going to go ahead and do a quick analysis. What this does is it analyzes all of the decoupling capacitors on your board and looks at the quality of the mounting and finds any poorly mounted or ineffective capacitors on that power plane. Okay. So I'm just going to go ahead and run through all of these three and see what the different results are that they give us. So uh, there are capacitor models that we do have to go ahead and define, um, but the tool is intelligent enough to find that capacitors that are attached between this 3.3 volt and our ground reference plane. So you'll see that these are our different groups of capacitors, and they're grouped by part name and value. Okay? So what you can do is just double click and go ahead and assign a decoupling capacitor model. So there are quite a few decoupling capacitors that are included with our library, and I've gone ahead and actually just gone, just chose to use those models. But if you'd like, you can go ahead and enter in a custom model and enter in your capacitance, your effective series resistance, and inductance, and that will create a fairly accurate model for you. If you want to get even more into uh, the accuracy of a model, you can use a SPICE or touchstone model if you have those available to you. So the quick analysis, again, is very quick, very easy to do. And what I can do here is I'm going to create an HTML report of the results of this analysis and go ahead and click Run. All right. So hyperlinks, I believe with almost every simulation, we do have the ability to go ahead and generate this nice-looking HTML report that gives you all of the results and any waveforms, if applicable, to that particular type of simulation. So uh, just a quick rundown of what's going on in, in this result for this report is just the capacitor, the model that we used, the value, and the mounting quality. So the mounting quality is looked at from a lot of different calculations that Hyperlinks is running. It's using the effective series res resistance, the effective series inductance, and then the actual frequency that the power plane is being simulated at. Okay, so the main results that we're getting from this are comments on the mounting scheme of those capacitors. Okay. So any highlights like mounting shared with other capacitors, so that could be sharing a, a pin or sharing a via, for example, they're routed to the same via that's going to that ground layer. Okay. So this is just a quick analysis again to go ahead and show us if there's anything that is very incorrect with the capacitors that we've chosen and used in our power distribution network design. So if I want to go again ahead and choose a lumped analysis, so lumped analysis is definitely more of an actual analysis. The quick analysis is just checking to make sure everything's set up correctly. The lumped analysis is actually going to go ahead and run a simulation and see the impedance of our power plane. So it does ignore the placement of the capacitors. It treats all of your capacitors on that power plane as a lumped ideal capacitor, hence the name lumped capacitor. Uh, it ignores the placement of the caps as well as the board outline but it does include the mounting parasitics of those capacitors. So it gives us a good idea of how our impedance looks on that power plane. So I'm going to go ahead and select the nets that we want to probe. And again, that's going to be that 3.3 volt supply as well as the ground node or ground net. Again, we're going to set up our capacitor models. But the good thing with hyperlinks is if once you set up those models once or set up a a partless file, it will always be modeled correctly. Setting the target impedance. So this is the impedance of the power plane that we're actually trying to reach. So what we can do here, if you're not exactly sure of the impedance, we can set a peak transient current, uh, the nominal supply of that voltage plane, as well as the max percentage ripple that we want to achieve on this plane. 
So I'll go ahead and click Next, and it's going to go ahead and calculate the target impedance that we're shooting for in this design. Okay. So you'll see here that we've got that target impedance already in there. And what I can do here is select easy common settings just for uh, our different type of capacitance between plane layers, and I'll just go ahead and use the default settings for that. We do have the ability to set the control, the frequency sweep. So this is going to be sweeping that power plane and the ICs connected to it from one megahertz all the way up to 150 megahertz, which is a pretty good upper threshold for AC power plane analysis. Okay. So what I can do now is just run the analysis. And again, it's going to create that HTML report for us. So it opens up the results in the touchstone viewer. But then again, if we create the HTML report, it has a little bit better graph to actually understand in this HTML report. Okay. So what we're looking at here is a graph of the effective impedance across that entire frequency range. Okay. So we'll see that we have our upper bound, the target impedance in that orange line which was 132 ohms. And then we have the effective impedance across our frequency threshold that we swept the power plane on. Okay. So actually, this looks like a pretty good power plane. We have it decoupled fairly well for our target impedance that we're looking at here. Okay. So if there's anything above this orange line, and if I actually want to go ahead and probe across this, it'll give us data points as I move my cursor. But if there's any point above this orange line, that just means that at that particular frequency, we are going to be seeing a higher impedance than what we are shooting for, and we may need to look at our decoupling strategy. Okay, so that's how we can interpret those results. And again, this is the lumped analysis. So if this is just essentially across the entire design, across the entire power plane, not at any particular IC nets or IC pins. So the typical workflow for using this analysis is to go through quick analysis, lumped analysis, and then the distributed analysis. And what the distributed analysis actually does is the most simulation out of any of these analysis, of course. So what the distributed analysis does is it actually accounts for the locations of all of our decoupling capacitors, as well as the inner plane capacitance and inductance that's created from our different planes or stack up in the design. Yeah. And uh, before I hop into that, I do want to show that this is the stack up editor. And this is within the hyperlinks tool, it brings in all of the stack up data from your CAD tool that you're working with. Okay, so this gives us the ability to go ahead and if we have an issue and we think we can solve it very easily by adjusting the stack up the thickness or the dielectric constant, if you have that kind of play wiggle room with your manufacturer, you can play around with those values here and see how that's going to affect our decoupling strategy due to capacitance and interplane inductance as well. So uh, the really the only thing different between uh, lumped analysis and distributed analysis setup is I'm going to set the target impedance again. But now what I'm going to do is go ahead and select the power pins or the IC pins that I actually want to probe at, as in I want to check the impedance on this power plane at every single one of these different IC pins. Okay, so it's going to do that same analysis but again, account for our capacitor placement strategy as well as the IC pins and where they're located. I'm still running to that 150 megahertz and creating that HTML report. So what I can do here is run the analysis. It should not take too long here. I 
do believe I have the results as well, so let me open those up. So the easiest way to actually look at this is through the HTML report. So again, this looks exactly very similar to what we saw in the lumped analysis, but now we're actually seeing the impedance at every single one of those IC pins. Okay, So you'll see that uh, some of these IC pins, we may need to take a look at the decoupling strategy close to them because they are getting above our target impedance of 132 ohms. So again, what this is really doing is taking that decoupling analysis, understanding where all of the decoupling capacitors are, and seeing what the effective impedance is across this frequency range at every single one of those IC pins that we've actually gone ahead and selected to probe at. So that is the post layout analysis. So at that frequency range of 100 or 1 to 150 megahertz, we might have an issue at those upper bounds of our frequency analysis. So we want to understand what we can do to actually go ahead and fix this issue. Okay. So what we can do now is actually play around with this environment in our line sim tool. In order to do that, what I'm going to do is go ahead and export this net to a freeform schematic. This allows me to export the 3.3 volt net as well as the ground net to our PDN editor. Okay, so this is all within hyperlinks again. It's included in this hyperlinks license uh, that allows us to do this what if scenario. So once I export that, it's going to go ahead and take a look at our plane in more of a graphical view that we can actually play around with. Okay. So what I can do within here is again all of those same analysis in the decoupling wizard. This time I have the ability to go ahead and actually manipulate the design as I see, as I see fit. So for example what I can do is add a decoupling capacitor. And if I want to go ahead and add this decoupling capacitor, what I can do is just place a single capacitor or array this capacitor, create an array of decoupling capacitors and place them throughout my power plane. But um, right now I'm just going to go ahead and just add a single one. If I'd like to, I can edit the mounting scheme of the capacitor. What the mounting scheme really does is adds parasitics, of course. It's going to add inductance, add capacitance that's all going to be seen by the power plane and affect how effective this decoupling capacitor is going to be. So I can go ahead and edit this to create more length, create the pad inside the pin, for example, um, and just really fine tune this to the mounting scheme that we would like to be most effective. What I can do here is just assign which nets it's selected to and which planes. And I can assign the model that I would like for this capacitor as well. What I can do now is I can just go ahead and hit OK, and it's going to go ahead and put that capacitor on the board. So this is some what-if analysis allows us to go ahead and place more capacitors. We can remove capacitors to really see how it's going to affect us. What I can also do is I can create void areas in the plane. And draw that void area and create that for us. So within this view, I can do all that play around scenario, uh, add more copper if I'd like to, adjust the reference plane, add more stitching vias for whatever reason, 
and then go ahead and re-simulate in the decoupling wizard. So just for, to make this a little bit easier, I'll go ahead and do that lumped analysis. Check the capacitor models. Those should be defined once again. Set the target impedance. And run the analysis. Okay, so once the effective workflow, again, is to use hyperlinks board sim to do a check to see if you have AC issues, um, and then you can go ahead and export this, export your power plane to the line sim tool, and then do some what if scenario to understand how to fix your issues that you are finding. All right, so that was all I was planning on showing today. Is there any questions from anyone in the chat? Um, anything that I didn't cover that is a little bit unclear? Okay, well, if there are no further questions, here's my contact information. If something comes up, if you'd like to understand the tool a little bit more, or if you'd like to go ahead and actually start evaluating the tool, please feel free to reach out to me, uh, email or phone, and I'll do my best to help you out. Okay. All right, with that, I'm going to end the webcast. Thank you, everyone, for attending, and please feel free to reach out if you have any other questions. I do see, actually, Nicholas. Uh, do the simulations take into account any DC biasing present on the caps? Ah, that's a great question. Um, so no, they do not. So you're talking, I'm assuming, by polarized capacitors. Uh, they assume that they're hooked up in the correct polarity uh, and will just run the simulations that way. Okay, well, thank you everyone again for attending. Uh, there's my contact information. Please reach out to me if there's any other unanswered questions. All right, have a great day. Bye-bye.